to come and preach the word of God to us. Let's pray for our pastor together. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and thank you for the man of God in our lives. Anoint him, Lord. Speak through him today. May he share his heart with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Peace. Praise the Lord. Who loves him today? Praise the Lord. Ain't the Lord good? I mean, please, the Lord's coming back. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. Get all my stuff together. Oh, I'm world I can preach about all my stuff together. I believe I got it. I believe I got it. I'm telling you, I just look out here and I see a, such a beautiful congregation. Amen. Sister Creasy, I'm telling you the truth. You said you didn't do that very often. I said, well, you do it most every Sunday. <laughs> Holler, yeah. It's not very many Sundays. When you don't do it, you're sick. <laughs> so I have to take it. Beautiful message. Beautiful Sunday school. I told Brother Mark now, I said, we're teaching like that. You don't even need somebody to come back up here and preach. Man, if you ain't been preached to, you just weren't listening. I can tell you, you can do La La Land somewhere. And I'm telling you, that's, that word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Not just a two-edged sword, but any two-edged sword. It pierces. Beautiful. Good to see my friend today. Big Ricky. Glad you're here. I told my wife yesterday, I believe it I said, tomorrow's the day Big Ricky starts back to church. You know why I knew that? Two weeks ago, was he told me, I'm starting back to church. And he said, he even gave me the day that he's coming back. That's today. All you got to do, children, is make your mind. I'm going to come back and I'm going to for God. It, it, it really ain't hard because my Bible said the way of the transgressor is what's hard. All the benefits and a retirement plan that's out of this world. Oh, good. The book of Isaiah. Well, I said we didn't need to have to have preaching, but let's, let me give you about 30 minutes. Who will give me 30 minutes? Oh, you hand up high now. 30 minutes, hour, hour, 30 minutes, two hours. I get it. Rocky, you did have your hand. Oh, no. Alex, did you have your hand up? Okay. okay. Oh, God is so good. Isaiah 53, verse 1. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall go up, and this is speaking of Christ, for he shall go up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form nor comfortness, and when we shall see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Now, I'm going to just let you in on something today. I believe with all that's within me in divine healing. I believe that God is a healer of any disease. I know. But really, Isaiah is really not in reference to a physical healing. When he said it with his stripes, He'll heal. He is in reference to a spiritual healing. Don't misunderstand. I believe in all the other stuff. And I believe it's as biblical as anything. But Isaiah is telling us about our transgression, our transgressions, our iniquity, and all the stuff that in our grief and our sorrow and our afflictions. And then he said, But with his stripes, we're healed. Jesus died 
to save us. Amen. I want to preach a few minutes. The suffering of Christ. Play me a chorus, a chorus there, sister. Play your Bible down. Hit your hands and love it right now. This service to the name of Jesus. God, we want to thank you for everyone that you sent our way today. In Jesus' name, bless this world. Bless this world. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. suffering of Christ. Christ suffered that I could be saved. Christ suffered that I could be set free from the power of sin that holds people bondage today. I don't know if you understand it or not. I don't even know if you believe it or not. That we're in a world that's bound by sin. We're in a world that that and Sister Creasy, I thought covered it mighty well that, that blamed everything on the church. They want to blame everything on the Christians. The, the message that we preach brings people in bondage. But that the message that we preach is not a message of bondage. It's a message of freedom. I'm going to tell you what brings bondage. The bank of this world brains bondage. The booze and the drugs. They're what are, is bringing bondage to this world. People that are bound by sin. There are people today that are bound by drugs. Shooting heroin and cocaine and so forth into their bodies. Gotta have another fix. Got to have another joint of marijuana. They say, well, marijuana's not, not a habit for them. That's a lie that the devil is telling people. That's, just, that's a lie right out of the pit of hell. That's bondage, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus came and he suffered that I could be free from the power of sin. The Jews of that day was looking for a savior, a king, to deliver them from the oppression of the enemy. But before Jesus could come and set up a kingdom, he had to come as a suffering servant. He had to suffer for my sins and for your sins. Jesus suffered from the hands of men. Because verse 3 of our text said he was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our bases from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. So we find through the scripture that at the hand of men, Christ suffered. And I'm going to tell you, if he was here today, if he was walking on the earth this morning, he would still be suffering from the hands of men. Because if, if men today can't even stand the church, don't even like to hear the preaching. Don't want it, nothing about religion. What do you think they would do if Jesus was walking on the earth today with his teaching? George Glass Sr., one of the elders in our organization, preached a sermon at our camp meeting years ago. His title was, How Would You Like Jesus for a Pastor? Lord, do have mercy, did that elder preach. And if, he, if the world can't stand the church, I'm going to say it, as liberal and as compromised as a lot of churches are today, and as unholy and as, as much unlike God as churches, many churches are today, what do you think Brother Mark they would do if Jesus come along and taught the doctrine and the gospel that he taught when he walked on the earth? He was suffering from the hands of men. They beat him. They put straps on his back. They 
took a crown of thorns and, and, and pushed it down on his forehead and, and they got and he spit on him and, and they got all this kind of stuff. But but greater than that, greater than the literal punishment, the physical pain and the physical suffering that Jesus went through, he was rejected. Nobody likes to be rejected. Like Sister Creasy quoted the other night something about, I believe it was Sister Creasy, it may have been Brother Mark, something about sticks and stones may break my bone, but words can never hurt me. That's not true. Words kill you. Rejection. I don't like nobody, I don't even like to think anybody rejects me. I like to think everybody loves me. I'm a preacher, man, and I'm a king's kid. Anybody who's got any kind of sense as a baboon would love me. That's how sweet I am. Come on, I believe my message. I believe I'm sweet. I believe I'm kind. I don't get nasty when I preach. I don't get ugly when I preach. I just preach the truth. These people that don't believe fat meets greasy, they're not preaching the truth. I like to preach the truth. Jesus came into this world. The Bible said he was despised and rejected of men. You know what the word despised means according to what I looked up? It means to hold in contempt. It means to be vile and worthless. They despised him. Can you imagine, Sister Creasy, the leaders of the nation of Israel that was looking for a Messiah, that was looking for Christ to come. The prophets had prophesied about it, told them all about what was going to happen. And here it is, Israel, the leader of Israel, the leaders holding our Lord in contempt, looking at him and desire and despising him. Look at him, looking at him and calling him illegitimate. When the prophet Isaiah had stood flat-footed and said, Thus saith the Lord, A virgin shall conceive and bring forth a child, and thou art son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Are you hearing me? All the prophecies, all the, the, the predictions of, of Christ coming as a suffering Messiah. And when he got here, can you imagine the leaders of Israel rejecting him? Saying no. They wanted a king. They wanted a king to, to set them free. And they wanted a, a, a king to build a temple and, and set them free from the, from the Roman government. They wanted a, a Messiah. They wanted Jesus to come. But they didn't want him come, to come like he came. They was expecting and wanting something different. They wanted him to come as a suffering, as a king. He came as a suffering Messiah. Herod killed all the babies from two years old and, and younger, trying to get rid of Christ, attempting to kill Jesus. They despised him, not for what he did. They, so, so, they despised him for what he didn't do. They wanted something different. They didn't want it like it was. They wanted a fighting Messiah. They wanted somebody that would fight, but he came as a peacemaker, and they couldn't handle it. Hey, they weren't a Messiah to ride in on a white horse, but Jesus rode in on a donkey. They couldn't comprehend. They couldn't fathom what was going home. So therefore they rejected him. If they had only went to the word of God, if they had only searched out the scripture, they would have found out he was everything the scripture said he was. He was God in flesh. He was Emmanuel. He came to set us free. He suffered and died for the lost. Hallelujah. He was that Messiah. They wanted Jesus to deliver them as I said, from the hands of the Romans, but Jesus came to deliver them from the bondage of sin, and they couldn't deal with it. So they rejected him. He suffered. He was rejected of men. John 8, 44 said, Ye are of your fathers the devil. Oh, when Jesus spoke those words, man, you talking about, you talking about throwing a monkey wrench in the spokes. You talking about upsetting the apple cart upsetting the church deacon board you talking about getting right under the skin of the elders of the church 
He said, you are of your father's the devil. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Where's it at? Have you got it? Okay, I'll get it. I've got it right here. There it is. And the lust of your fathers ye you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. Speaking of the devil. When he speak of the lie, he speak of his own. For he's a liar and the father of it. Nothing more hurtful than to be re uh, rejected of your own. But Brother Crom, when he spoke, the elders didn't like him. Right. They were very, very uptight about it. Then they was accusing him of being the devil. They even said that he's got a devil. And but somebody in the crowd said, "Can a man uh, that's got a devil, or what?" They said, "Can the devil cast out a devil?" Man, it was so much. It, they was as confused as a termite in a yo-yo. They didn't know if they was hanging clothes or washing clothes. They didn't know what was going on. They were so confused. Somebody said he's got a devil. Somebody said he can't have a devil. He's casting out devils. Confusion had set in. Oh Lord. Would he ever confuse this world today if he walked down the street of Covington, Tennessee this morning and took out the Word of God and began to expound the Word of God? You talk about confusion if he can walk into most of our churches and most of our sanctuaries and come in and have a seat and wait for the elder of the church to invite him to the platform because he's a God that, a God of, of order. He'd come to this platform and he'd turn and he'd look at you with those eyes of God, of God himself and he would teach if you're going to get up you're going to have to get out if you're going to get right you're, or you're going to have to get right or you're going to get left let me tell you his resume would be rejected it wouldn't get past the board it would never come to a vote for a pastor the suffering of Christ Jesus suffered with men. Yes, Surely he had borne our grief, verse, verse 4 and 53 of Isaiah, yes. and carried our sorrow. Yes. We esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. The word born means to carry away. Jesus had great sympathy with hurting people. He hung out with the crowd that was less fortunate. He hung out with the crowd that was hurting. He just carried away their song. He just spoke words that lifted people. He spoke words like, go and sin no more to the prostitute that was taken in adultery. Let me tell you something without being too plain. I don't want to offend anybody. But I can promise you this was not her first Saturday night on the table. She was well known around the, the places in town. If you went into that town and asked some man, where can a man have a good time tonight? They would have been able to tell you where that woman lived. She was a prostitute. She was a hooker. Is anybody listening to me? I'm telling you the gospel, y'all. I'm telling you. When them elders pulled her dragged her to that Christ that day on that old dusty, sweaty road at Jerusalem. She fell down. They probably threw her down on that ground. And somebody said, Lord, this woman's taken in adultery. In the very act of adultery. I ain't going into no detail how they found it. I'm just telling you. They said, the law said, well, stoner, but what do you say? You know the story. Fast forward to tape. Go, he said. When she stood up, Brother Tim, nobody there but her and the Lord Jesus. They, she's standing there in front of the Messiah, the God of creation, the God of eternity. She's standing there. She's, he said, woman, where are those thine accusers? The law said it's got to be two or three. Couldn't be one. It had to be at least two or three. Nobody there. Where are those thine accusers? Has any man condemned thee?
Can, is I, have I got a witness here that this woman's guilty? She turns and looks and said, No man, Lord. Uh, the words from Emmanuel. Then said, Neither do I condemn thee. Go. The elders wouldn't like that. Church leaders wouldn't like that. She would not be one chosen to be a deaconess. She can never carry the checkbook. She can never carry the, the money bag. They would never trust her. But Jesus said, Neither do I condemn the go, go, and see her no more. Have a good day. Grief means sickness, and sorrow means pain. Jesus bore it all. Not only did he assume a true human nature, but he took our sorrow and our grief upon himself. Jesus took all our sickness and infirmities. That is what his human nature was subject to. He was subject to suffering. He hungered. He thirsted just like a man would out in a hot field plowing. Uh, they, don't do, they don't get hot plowing anymore. They got tractors with air conditioning. $350,000, $400,000 tractors. But they're not making any money. you got to understand that. Right, Ellis? I'm telling you, right. <laughs> used to plow me. How many of you when you was in the world, how many ever heard that song that, that uh, was it Walter Brennan used to sing, Old Rivers? Why, he, he stopped, leaned back on the reins. Anybody ever plow you besides me? Oh, man, he's not. We're going to go back to the new plow. Lean back on the reins. Wipe the sweat off his brow and talk about a place he's going to go. He'd say, one of these days, I'm going to climb that mountain. Walk up there among them clouds where the cotton's high and the corn's growing and there ain't no fields to plow. I'm going to tell you, there it was. Jesus picked up all our trouble. He picked up all my pain. When I have a spiritual pain, I can turn it over to the suffering Messiah. When I have a spiritual grief, when things are not right, at the death of a loved one, when my family's upside down, when somebody, when my teenage boy has got on drugs, when my teenage daughter has gone totally bananas, when they won't do right, I can carry my sorrow and I can carry my grief to the suffering Messiah who carried all of it. He picked up all my problems. He picked up all my sins. He picked up all my diseases. He carries everything. Hallelujah. Because he's the suffering Messiah. Jesus couldn't sin. He bare our sins. He bear, the, one, the, the one thing he couldn't do, but the one thing he could do, he couldn't sin, but he could pick up my sins. He was sinless. There was no guile found in his mouth. He was Emmanuel. He was God in flesh. The one thing he could not do, that was sin. But the one thing he could do, he picked your sins up because he didn't have any sins. He couldn't nail his sins to that cross. He, see that cross there? Jesus couldn't nail sins up there. He had to pick up some sin from somewhere. He, had, he didn't have any pain. He had to pick up my pain. He didn't have any grief. He had to pick up my grief. He picked up all my problems and he nailed them to a cross. And now, because he's the suffering Messiah, I am free. I'm free. Somebody said, I think it was Martin Luther King one time on his speech, that great speech they call it, said, I'm free. I'm free. Thank God I'm free. I got a message for this audience today. I am free. I am free. Thank God I'm free. I'm free from pain. I'm free from sin. And there's occasionally when I do have some pain, like right now, my chest hurts. And I've done it turning these pews around and up and down, well, not up, but down steps. That's okay, it was my fault. I, I was supposed to call Brother Roger and let his men do it. And thank God they did do a lot. And I appreciate that. But for the last, however, how long it's been since we done these pews? I was afraid to sneeze. Yeah. I grabbed myself. You think I'm dying? <laughs> Heart attack. Oh God! I can hold my nose. <laughs> Praying to call. I mean, like it hurt right here. 
Bill, Roger say? Scott told me, he said, that's the one you ought not pulled. I said, well, I, they didn't ask me. It just pulled. And I'm sore, and I'm hurting, but I ain't hurting much. I'm going to continue on. I'm going to keep on going. If it hair lives every day, I'm going to dip and tell I'm going to keep on preaching. Somebody said, you need to retire. I said, no, I don't. I need to retire. I don't need to retire. That's for old people. That's for old men. That's for old gray-haired stack tooth men. But retirement's too boring. I need to get a hold of God and get fired back up. <laughs> Let me get out of there. He carried my sickness. He carried my sorrow. Things that he couldn't do. He had to pick up my sins. Because he was a sin bearer. And Sister Green said there wasn't no sin for him to bear. So he had to get my sin. You're not understanding where I'm coming from. You weren't there when I wrote these notes. I'm telling you, Jesus took sin to that cross. But it wasn't his sin, it was your sin. It was your filthy life. It was your filthiness that Jesus took and hung on that cross. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm sorry, I got a little plane there, I guess. I didn't even wake you up. Jesus suffered for us. First line said he was wounded for our transgressions. Amen. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him with his strife for heal. In essence, he took my place. He took my I should have been there. I should have been the one. Thinking of the cross. It ought to have been me. Because I was the sinner. And there were two thieves hanging there, one to his right and one to his left. One of them said, If you're the Christ, Come down off the cross and said, we'll save, let's see, I said, save yourself and us. Uh -huh. And I'll believe you. Right. He would not have done it. No, he wouldn't. No, he would not. In Luke's gospel, I can prove it. Luke, Luke records a story about a prodigal son. No, he, he, he records a story about a rich man that was clothed in purple and fine linen and he died and went to hell. There was a beggar at his gate that died and went to Father Abraham's bosom. That's how it was. The beggar asked Father Abraham to allow Lazarus to come back down and put his finger in some water and cool his tongue. He said, I'm tormented in his flames. And he said, well, you can't, that can't happen. He said, uh, said, there's a great gulf fix between y'all and us. And said, uh, no one here can come down there. No one there can come up here. And said, besides that, they have Moses and the prophets. Now they didn't literally mean, he did not literally mean Moses himself was walking around. He meant the books of Moses and the books of the prophets. I, now that's my interpretation. If that's wrong, well then you forgive me and pray for me. Pray for the sick and preach. But Moses and the prophets were not around. So it was the books that Moses and the prophets had written. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. He said they won't hear them. I sound like today, don't you? They won't hear them. He said, but Father Abraham said, you're right, but if one rose from the dead and went back, they wouldn't hear them either. So if you won't hear me, you're not going to hear him if he walked in the door because you'd say he was an imposter. So I'm just simply preaching. We all have a spiritual sickness. This world has been infested with spiritual sickness that's going to have to come to Jesus. It don't matter who gets that White House. I mean, I got my person I'm going to vote for and it's not Hillary. If you need to know that, it's not Hillary. Anybody that approves and votes for abortion at the time of conception to the time of delivery, I would vote for a dog catcher. That's just my opinion. Christian to vote for. I don't know how Christian to vote for somebody. You say, well, well, the other guy, I'm not voting for the other guy. I'm voting for the platform. Right. Amen. That's what I'm voting for. The so that's just my opinion. Now you just, you know, you, you just go ahead. That's that's your job. That's your situation. I have to take, I have to take everything in my life. Let me tell you something about living for God. <laughs> Some of you making up your mind you're going to live for God. Let me tell you something about living for God. you got to do it every day. You can't live for today and be out of here tomorrow. You can't do that. You can't do that. You've got to. And, and there's going to be a battle. 
enemy hits you, he'll hit you right where it hurts. But not Billy Pooh. He'll hit you right where it hurts. He hit some people in their vehicles. He hit some people in their in their companions. He hit some people in their children. All kinds of things. He hits people. I told somebody the other day, let me see who was it I was in reference to. Uh, you, you hear so many, you see so many sometimes. Oh, I know who it was now, but I'm not going to call the names. I can see it. It's stupid. Uh, I do a lot of dumb things. And I'm not going to do that. Uh, I've heard of and seen it where a loss of a child causes a divorce. So much tension. That's why I pray so hard for Brother Sister Martin every day. Now, they're my friend. I can use their name on Facebook anywhere else because they're my friend. And it seems as if this death of their precious child has brought them closer. That's right. Sister Martin told me the other day Roger was talking at, at, at my house. Now I see I believe was downstairs eating some lunch one day. And she was she was petting Brother Martin. She was fixing his food and honey, do you want me to get you some dessert and things of that sort? Sisters? Yeah. <laughs> Plug me in that. And I said, Sister Martin, I just kind of asked him, you sure being good to him. And she looked up at me, she said, he's all I got. He's all I've got. All we have today is Jesus. Amen. And the devil hits us right where it hurts. He'll bring everything in this world against us. He's trying to stop the church. He is trying to stop God's church. But it'll never happen, honey. It'll never happen. If I fall dead as last year's bird is today, there's a man to my left and a man to my left over here and a lady to my right. We'll get this microphone and the truth will keep being preached in this assembly. This assembly will never bow down to the hand of the enemy. We're here and we're going to stay. We're going to keep preaching. We're going to keep singing. We're going to keep shouting. We're going to keep clapping our hand. We're going to keep giving all to God. We're going to keep baptizing people in Jesus' name until the Lord says, Come on home, church. Stand with me if you would. Stand with me if you would. If you've never repented of your sins, today's a great day. Why don't you come? Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and a heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. I'm meek and lowly. In heart, you can find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy. And my burden are light. Bring it to Jesus today. Whatever your problem is. Got a rebellious husband. Got a rebellious wife. Bring it to Jesus. Got rebellious children. Bring them to Jesus. Are you rebellious yourself? Come on to Jesus. Talk to Jesus right now. Join me in the front. Come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, come to Him right now. Just bring your troubles, bring your cares, bring your problems, bring it all to Jesus Christ today. Someone to care, someone to share all your troubles. I know other can do. Oh, he'll come down. He'll come down. From the sky, burst the tears from your eyes. You're his child. You're his child. And he cares. And he cares for you.
Cause you're his child And he cares for you again so you come back and would and be in that service with us two weeks from today yes Mama who Mama Mama Kay. Kay. oh yeah sorry we didn't get you the other day come on over here sister Kay. we got so many the other night I forgot about you 16 years old 16 how 16 years old 16 you don't you don't lose all right. Okay. Now y'all, y'all better be nice now. Forty you know men. How these women are about them age? Who can get forty? You say now you're nice. Who can guess Sister K's age? Sue, do you know? Oh, do you? Okay. I bet you, Sister K. Do you know? Okay. Uh, I got people scared to guess what it is. <laughs> no. Sister, no. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna guess. 71. 68. Uh-oh. You say 68? Ryan wants to guess. Ryan wants to guess. He waits to see. 73. 74. 74. 74. 74. Because I'm going to play football. I said 68. 68? 75. Up from 70. Seventy nine. Seventy nine? I don't know. Seventy five. Seventy seven. Seventy seven. Seventy seven. Wow. Wow.
service today. Bring us back tonight to worship you. In Jesus' name.